Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to, I don't even know what this is, again, some kind of, let's call it the new loot video. Let's get some more crap, and let's check it out. Uh, so I uh, went on a bit of a ordering binge from Federation Models. Yeah, so, so, much, so much stuff, so much stuff. Let's check it out. Um... We got a very nice uh, dual impulse engine unit that is available in their product section. You can see very nicely detailed, very little flash just on the edge there. Um, and this is pretty cool on the back here. Got two aft torpedo launchers and some other really nice detailing. You can see the grill vanes inside the engines and even this is all detailed up here so basically wherever you want to add this on a refit type ship you would cut those panel lines and then this would just fit up under there so and I think the bottom saucer might need a little bit of modification but I don't think too much so the only slight detriment is you can't really light it I mean, I guess you could drill that out and drill those out or something, but yeah, it seems like a lot more work. But uh, so it's not really meant for lighting, but it is very cool. It adds a different detail, which is very nice. Let's get that out of the way. What else? We got some uh, of the mm, what are they called? This, oh, warp engines, ascension type warp engines, ran type. I don't remember so many different names, but. Uh, very cool, kind of a different look to them. I call them the shark warp engines. I don't know they look sharky to me, but uh, see, so kind of have the extended prow. It kind of sinks in a little bit there. Different top, bigger uh, fin on the back. So very nice detail. Very little flash. Very little cleanup to do. It's pretty much just slap them on the ship. So pretty awesome. Else we got the uh, saucer-mounted deflector dish, very nice little kit, and it even has a nice deflector dish. Sometimes I just thought it was uh, the mount, but it does include a dish too, so that's nice. So I'm sure that'll come in handy. And there's one more resin thing. There it is, right there, right in front of my face. Uh, the 1,000 scale planetary sensor. And it's a little different than the regular 1000 scale version. And I think it's supposed to be TOS, but you could probably put it on just about any ship. Hell, it'd probably work as a deflector dish. So, very cool. What else we got here? We got some Terran Empire decals. Very, very nice from PNT. And I wish I'd got these, or even ordered them before I did my ISS Enterprise because I might do might have done something slightly different but uh, they're still very nice. You've got the classic versions and then the um, In a Mirror Darkly uh, Enterprise era ones kind of. So these little pennants are pretty cool. So what else we got? We got the uh, 1 1000 series hull graphics so just some random kind of stuff some Terran empires, some of the um, hull triangles underneath, various different grills, RCS thrusters, pennants. So all sorts of cool stuff. I'm sure that'll be wonderfully useful. Here's a bag for some reason. Uh, then we've got generic movie decals. So plenty of different size fonts or different size uh, yeah, registry. Things. We've got some lines, different graphics, different pennants, some other nice little graphics. And this one will be very useful doing custom work. Uh, generic TOS uh, 1 1000 scale lettering and numbering. Get some USSs and NCCs in there, so that'll be good. And we'll save this one because it's related to something else. We'll get to that in a minute. 
So that's just kind of the accessory stuff. Let's look at some kits. This one I've been wanting for a long time. It's such a cool ship, I think. And I couldn't even wait to film it because I decided to build it up almost instantly. And this is 2500 scale. Um, or, you know, whatever. But uh, it's the Federation Models Jismatron styling, which is not perfectly accurate to the Kelvin style. Like, some of the detailing is different for the ones that are supposed to be the Kelvin era ships. Like, some of the things are different. It's hard to explain. But, um, yeah, very, very nice. I drilled that in there. It does come with a little stand and uh, rod. So that's very nice. Just some bubbles to fill in there. Shouldn't be too hard. Really nicely detailed, really nice detailed engines. So, the... <coughs> Sorry about that. thing I'm wondering is, what the hell do you paint these ships? So sometimes they look like concrete, or like, you know, kind of a tan beige concrete, and then sometimes they look like wet, cold, fresh concrete, like kind of a dark gray, and then sometimes they're kind of like a lav, very cold gray, too. It's it's all on lighting, even from what I assume is the same, like, CG model that they used in the movie, so... That'll be interesting to try to figure that out. You know what I really like about this, too, is that you notice all those little panels are, like, polished, and it came like that. I just think that's kind of cool. So hopefully we can, or I can incorporate that into the paint job somehow. So, really very cool. You do get a sheet of decals. A very small sheet is the directions. And it's just USS Constitution. I would have preferred Republic. Yeah, just because when you make it like an early, early old ship, and I know Constitution would have been the first, but uh, but it's still cool. And actually, uh, I think they're too big. Where'd you go? Somewhere. Oh, the right here. Whip. I think they're too yeah, just a little too big to use these ones. But if I wanted to change it, I'm sure we could come up with something, but still very nice little simple decal sheet. That'll make it easy. Alright, let's get this guy out of here. Next up, I had a bit of a PNT Models orgiastic feast. This kit I got by accident because I actually ordered another one, which is one I was waiting for today, or else I would have done this earlier, but uh, they sent me this one by mistake, and uh, I was, they uh, just let me keep it, so that was pretty cool, so awesome, thank you to them, but uh, it is the Destroyer Scout conversion from PNT, and I love the little box art and seal this, blah blah blah, lovely, lovely set of directions, it's, it's, it's wonderful. I've kept him in the right, you know, prepared for this. But uh, you have a nice graphic on the front, all the tools you need, and they did it just like the old Franz Joseph technical manual, which is pretty awesome. There's all the parts, what comes with it, wash your model, Let's start with the step-by-step -step instructions, which is really nice. Nice measurements and stuff like that, too. paint guide, a nice weathering guide on how to do uh, some chalk lines and stuff like that, pastel chalks, and a very nice decal guide, tells you what all you need to borrow from the round two kit, because this is all you get on this one, and it, like I said, it is a conversion kit, but you get uh, six different names, three destroyers, three scouts, uh, some neck decals, the little... Uh, box that goes on themselves and yep 
And just like the Kelvin Prize, I could not wait to build this guy up. Um, it's a really nice kit. You only get a few pieces. We've got the neck, the uh, little sensor array on the bottom. You get a little plug for the hole where the uh, nacelle would attach to. And you get two little uh, vents for the side. So there's a little bit of a little bit of work you gotta do, which uh, you know I think we're all used to for models at this point. But um, basically, uh, you don't use any of the secondary hull stuff. Um, you uh, most of the stuff you have to do is to the warp engine, and basically you sand off the uh, two flush vents, whatever the heck they are. Uh, get rid of those, and then you kind of you basically rotate it and fill in all this stuff, chop some stuff off of this so it fits this way. Um, let's see, this one or this uh, intercooler or whatever is actually plugged into the original holes uh, that were made for it on the kit, and then this one you kind of have to use you know measurements to uh, get this guy all lined up properly. So. Yeah, pretty cool little kit there. Um, I've enjoyed working on it. But uh, yeah, so we're just on the building and painting process. And this is the one I actually ordered, uh, which just came today, the Ptolemy Class Transport and Tug Conversion Kit. And this one I have not started on. So we can take a raw look at that. Very nice box art, which we will get the hell out of the way. So what do we got? We got a nice tube, very nice uh, uh, ABS tube, and some parts. Let's check out the directions first. Nice graphic on the front, all the tool supplies and paints. Although the paint scheme they have on here for both of those is not, or the, the color palette's not uh, accurate to the Smithsonian model, but I think it would still look good. Um, so wash, do some work on that. So convert, get those pylons on there. So very cool, very cool. I love how they treat their directions like the tech manual. I think that's awesome. So and decal guide at the back. Now I notice they have you mount these really close like using the bridge that's on the the, the kit part the original kit part um, goes in there but the way I always saw the SFB ones they're actually mounted like somewhere out here at least the miniature ones so I might do that because to me it's always been that way so I that's the way I accepted it so um, I just like that look better of them just being a little bit wider out so I'll probably do some mods like that. And I might do magnets on the inside or something. It would be kind of cool, so that way I can take off the tug pod. And apparently there's a, a tooth that will help you along with this process, so good, uh, good brushing. Let's check out decals really quick. Nice set of names. Cool Starfleet Transport Command pennants. So, very nice. And of course, all the little resin parts. What do we got? We got front and back for the tug, or the pod part, which fits on there really nicely. And we have the neck. A little bit of flash to clean up. And there's a little pallet. I'm not sure there's too much flash in there, but kind of get the idea. And of course, a little tiny, hopefully I don't break it, deflector dish mount that goes on the saucer. So, very cool. Another uh, 1000 Enterprise that will have to be sacrificed for this guy. There's, I have so many, I'm gonna have so many secondary holes running around, it's, it's gonna be strange. So, I can't have all those 
and also, no, nah, nah, we'll, sa we'll save that one for the end, or almost the end. Let's do this guy first. Speaking of destroyers, I also picked up this kit from um, also Federation Models, and I think this is Federation Models kit, not just the, um, like, one of their just other companies that are inside it, so... Um, this is also a very nice kit. I think it was the same guy. I'm not not 100% sure on this. But I think it was the same guy who did... Wow! I'll just smack into the camera. Uh, same guy who mastered the Phobos class. I'm assuming because the saucer is very similar in construction. So... Uh, okay, one small problem. And it's nothing against the kit. It's just my misunderstanding of the kit. So, that's, I guess that's probably just easier to show you the graphic, but so there's a little work to be done. Let's just look at the graphic. So you'll notice that this engine is very, I don't know, close to this the main hull, and this is kind of stout. I don't know. I don't know what the words are I'm looking for. But basically, this is the ship I wanted. And you notice it's very... I don't know. I like the angles. I like the tall top nacelle. I think that looks really cool. I always loved that ship from Starfleet um, Command, and oh, I think I remember it in the Shattered, or Shattered Mirror game. That was the USS Excelsior video game with fighters. So, I guess I just, in my mind, had seen that ship, and basically this is like one of those dreadnought conversion engines is kind of what's going on there. And this is, you know, similar type thing. So, uh, I, uh, yeah, it's nothing against the kit. Fantastic kit. It was just... I should have paid attention more, but I still want to build it up. I'm still excited about it. I might try scratch building more of what I want to see out of that, a different kind of pylon, and then modding this guy up a bit, like changing this angle and doing a couple other things, so we'll see. Or maybe I'll use this for a dreadnought somewhere down the line. I'll turn this into something else. Who knows? But... That's that. Um, a very nice little baggie of other parts. Cool dual docking bay bridge. And you can either put a torpedo launcher inside the bay or a NX-02 style deflector dish for some reason. But, yeah, it could be cool. So, and a very nice set of decals for the USS Asuka. And last one before the big, bigger thing. Uh, did get the Dreadnought to finish off all the Franz Joseph ships over there. Or that we saw previously. Let's see if I can get it out of here without destroying it. And unlike the last review. These kits are all still in production. You can still buy all of these, which is nice. Um, but this is another conversion kit. Uh, this one's a little less aggressive on the 1-1000 parts. So all these you can probably make from left, if you do a bunch of them like me, um, you could probably do all the stuff for this with leftover parts from other kits. Um, but uh, because actually you kind of do need two sets of things for some stuff, because you're going to need three warp engines, and preferably be the same ones, and if you want the spiked ones, then you know, you need three spikes, so you need two, blah, blah, blah. So, that's kind of a thing, but uh, basically how it works is a little notch, which goes back here, and the Warp engines will attach to those, and a big old saucer, goes like that, 
and then you'll have a the pylon. That attaches the center nacelle, like so. Boom. And two deflector dish mounts, a little plug for the center nacelle, shuttle bay frontal shuttle bay door. Just like that. And rear deflector mount. So it's a little it's a little bit warped this thing is, but some heat will uh heat gun will, or hot water will clean that up just fine, I think. So yeah, I think it looks like you need two bridge tops, because I think this is supposed to be a bridge top. You could probably use the bottom sensor dome, but uh, I think their intent was you use a, a bridge top there. I think that's what it says in the directions, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, you need two of the like pilot style spikes for right here. Those have two pilot style spikes. Um, the little shuttle bay clear piece. Obviously two deflector dishes. And then all the warp engine parts. Let's get those out of the way without smashing them. And again we're back to our nice tech manual style directions. With all the paints and stuff. Directions, tools. Parts, scrub the crap out of them. Engine sound. They have you do a side mounted engine. I like a central engine instead of the in I don't know the inner cooler stuff, whatever flux chillers, whatever it's called, being on the inside. See, they have you do it where it's two right warp engines. But um, I'll probably do what I did for the little scout here and uh, mix that up slightly so it shouldn't be too hard. The only problem is it doesn't come with more of those little rectangle things on the back so we'll have to figure something out. So. Very nice, good painting guide. All that good stuff. So, very cool. And have a nice decal sheet, although I might have got, I don't know if you can see it, but this might have been at the end of this print cartridge because you can see like these NCC's are black and then these numbers are kind of blue purpley so oh well we can make it work but I like I think I want to do Star Empire or Star League or something like that so uh, which is where uh, these guys will come in handy but um, we'll see how that works and I think you use a lot of windows from the uh, um, Polar Lights 1000 scale kit. So that's that. So last but not least, we come to the big, big finale of all this. I'm I'm weird and decided to buy this giant set of Kelvin era ships that someone was selling on eBay. And here, just look. There's 13 boxes, and I haven't even really analyzed all of what's in there yet, but there are a lot of ships, and I'm looking forward to it. We're going to make, it's going to be wonderful. Let's just check out one of them. I guess I just picked this one out. Um, it's, I think he was doing a kit bash fleet, and I think he has, he pro the, the original seller probably has even more ships, because um, there's a lot of just kind of stuff that probably got kit bashed into other stuff, so it's very cool. Um, but these are the StarCraft Kelvin kits, and really nice, fantastic detail on all these. Very little cleanup, too. I was impressed, like, especially with all this, like, little detail. Uh, got some nice going on here. Some warp engines. So... 
Very, very nice. Here's one. Let's see. Let's check this one out. There's a Kelvin. I don't even remember what's in what box. I kind of reorganized them. I think I put all the Kelvins in here. There are six or seven Armstrongs, I think. So, what's in this one? It is oh, another Armstrong. Just trying to find the more interesting thing like ah here we go he did start making some very very cool custom ships and this one's just one example i think this is based off the uh, uh federation models gizmatron models um the strike cruiser version so taking the newton type mixing it up a bit so and I think he started to paint it because this one's uh, painted in kind of a mm, concrete deck tan. I think it's camouflage gray color. So, but yes, yeah, very, very cool. Very, very awesome design. I love it. Let's leave that guy out. And hopefully this is what I think it is. Ah! Yes, you definitely need all of your extra little parts. There's this box and then another box full of secondary hulls and engine caps and stuff like that. We've got some roll bars and pylon mounts and end caps for secondary hulls, plenty of deflector dishes, which I hope we have plenty of deflector dishes because knowing me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break that tiny little thing. That's going to be awful. So, yeah, that's this should be interesting. So, but yeah, I don't think we need to go through all of them. You get, you get the idea. So, uh, yeah, that's that's what I got. Um, my plans with those are uh, we're going to do uh, try to do one of each standard ship, and then try to do some customs. I definitely want to do that red USS Excelsior. Because that might that would be an interesting paint job to try to get that right. Um, oh, duh! Right, the thing I saved till last for some reason. So fortunately, with all those ships, it did include a lovely giant decal sheet along with all of the kit decals. Got plenty of Armstrongs, Newtons. Like the uh, deflector dish decals, pretty cool. Newton, 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 Mayflower, Defiant, Kelvin, Kelvin, and Kelvin. And then this one has, ironically, it doesn't have Excelsior, but uh, that's okay. There are plenty of numbers with which to make that ship, but. Cool. Let's take a look at the other. If I can get it out. Another decal sheet. We've got names. And they don't have any mm, reg made registries. You kind of make them up since I guess, you know, it's kind of whatever you want to. But there's plenty of uh, stuff to make and plenty of uh, lettering to make whatever ship you want to. So that's very cool. And some deflector dishes, and some, uh, I think that goes on the back of the shuttle bay. These, I don't know where those go. I think those actually go, I thought I saw them on the back of this somewhere, so I'm not really sure. But, uh, anyway, so yeah, very cool XG Cal sheet. So, like I said, we'll go with something else. Maybe I do a Kelvin prize in this scale would be kind of cool. Um, I'd like to do like a four nacelle, like a constellation class would be neat, um, and some other stuff. He, he wrote on the boxes too what each one was going to be, and uh, there's some interesting ideas on there, so I'd kind of like to follow in those footsteps, but yeah, here's a picture of all the ships from the auction all laid out, so you can see what's all there, but um, yeah, it should be fun. I want to do a giant 
display with all of them, and maybe warping to Vulcan. Although, that's not really a dignified thing, seeing as all they got, they all got trashed. What is with that fleet, anyway? They're just completely useless. Every, all these ships are just useless. They all get trashed, they just hang out at the Starbase, then they get trashed, and then in Into Darkness, they just hang out at the Starbase, and then a giant black evil spaceship and the Enterprise show up behind the moon and blow each other up and then somehow like from the moon to earth they just like drift over there and nobody's like oh look there's a battle they're shooting oh look at them fall towards the earth this moon's pretty far away I'm just I'm just saying and uh and like, you know, we see the Enterprise is falling, and we see there's a big evil black spaceship we've never seen before that just happens to be, like, running full thrusters at our headquarters. Hey guys, let's, we could, you know, try. We could try, tractor beam, or whatever, something. Shooting. I mean, there was a whole bunch of them. I don't think they got I don't remember any dialogue about them being called off. I know in Star Trek Beyond, they all got trapped in the nebula. Because Krull, Krall, Kron, generic bad guy that wanted revenge, called them all into the nebula with a stress call or whatever. So, I, that one's... I get that. At least they tried. Of course, we didn't see them, so who knows what kind of ships they are. Unless they're that weird Reliant Miranda top half thing and then the weird security guard ships and then that ship that's just a expanded security guard ship with one less set of engines I guess from what you can tell from the screen caps I wish they'd show those off I'd just be curious to what those look like so anyway that's that's what I got I hope you enjoyed this um, I hope this also suffices for some kit reviews I just figured I'd do them all in one, one batch there. Um, but I definitely I recommend all these. They're great quality products. Um, all these ships are available from StarCraft Models, which you can get on FederationModels.com um, in the StarCraft Models section. And then uh, PNT Models makes all the Franz Joseph ships. Uh, if you're looking for any of the decals, just check their product section. Um, the PNT graphics are... Uh, decal section is where I got all these. Uh, actually, I think all of these, if I recall correctly. Those are all PNT graphics, but plenty of great stuff out there. Um, these, of course, made by StarCraft, and that's in their decal section. So all this stuff's still available. Very nice, fun kits to do. Uh, do some unique things, that's for sure. And, uh, yeah, just be creative. I'll, I'm going to try to be creative and come up with something. The paint job on these guys is going to be interesting for sure but uh, I might even order some Aztec decals for a few of them but uh, some of the good ones that come out but um, yeah all right I think I've rambled enough uh, if there's any kits you guys are interested in having reviewed please post them in the thing I usually just do Star Trek kits so it's kind of what I like to stick with prop or models so yeah if you made it this far thank you for watching and listening to me talk about spaceships. No, 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 no. So, anyway, take care, guys, and happy modeling! <laughs>